week was, was Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And Bill was here to give you a wonderful sermon on that, I'm sure. It's, and Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead is the, in the Gospel of John, is the seventh sign. Right? There are seven signs in the Gospel of John, and Jesus raising Lazarus is the seventh sign. It goes into chapter 12, which is where Jesus goes to have dinner at Lazarus' house. And there, Mary, Martha's sister, Lazarus' sister, takes a pound of nard, pours it all over his feet. If you don't know what nard is, look it up. It's a wonderful explanation on, on Wikipedia about what nard is. And it's super expensive. I mean, we're, the, the, this pound of perfume that she pours over his feet, we're talking about like two years' wages worth of stuff. Think about what you make in a year. And now think about spending two times that on one thing. Now thinking about cracking it open and pouring it over somebody's feet. Unabashed lotion is what that is. The next part of the of the of chapter twelve is Jesus riding into Jerusalem, which which, which we just talked about with the kids, right, on the donkey. And then we get to chapter thirteen. Chapter thirteen is the beginning of Holy Week in the Gospel of John. It's taken us twelve chapters to get to the start of Holy Week. Normally, this reading is a reading that we have on. Does anybody know what day of the church it's usually on? <laughs> Monday, Thursday. But because of the, the cycle we're going through this year, we have it now on the second Sunday in Lent. The first part of Jesus' week through trial with his disciples and everything. So this last, this, this starting here at the beginning of chapter 13 begins the last night of Jesus. And then Friday doesn't come until chapter 18, verse 27. We have five chapters on Jesus' last night with the disciples in the Gospel of John. But before we get to that, last week I was at JYG with six young people, eight young people, eight, eight young people and two young at heart people from this congregation, um, where we talked about um, masks. We talked about masks. I put my mask on for you. And we talked about masks. And the masks that we wear. It doesn't like that with this. Let's do this. That'll work. We talked about masks that we wear. And they talked about masks. The, the, the speaker there talked about masks to the kids. About how we wear masks to the people around us. How we don't give our own self out to other people. How people cause us to wear masks that they want us to wear. And how we make other people wear masks to hide things that we don't want to see in them. Right? We all do that. We all have a mask. You all probably put one on when you came in this door. Now it's not as colorful as mine is. And you didn't actually physically put it on your face. But you put on a mask when you walk through that door. Because you don't want people here to know what's going on inside of you. You don't want people here to understand what it is that's happening in your life. You don't want people here to know the real you. We think we have to put on a false face. And we have to have everything together. And we have to have everything perfect before we can come into this place. Or we can go into different spaces. You have different masks for the different spaces that you go into. We all put them on. Sometimes we put them on by choice, and sometimes we put them on because other people want us to put them on because they don't want us to be who we are. And last week, the speaker went through talking to the, to the youth and to the adults there about how this is something that we need to stop. There's no reason we should have to put on masks. There's no reasons that we should have to try to hide parts of ourselves or take what somebody else is telling us that we need to be and, to, and put that onto ourselves. We need to be who God created us to be and who we are because we are beautiful just the way that God created us. And we don't need a mask to hide anything in our lives. I wonder how many of you saw what I put by the back door when you came in to worship this morning. Did anybody see it? 
It's actually still sitting back there. I know at least one person saw it because they asked me about it. I know I'm going to turn around and look and see what's back here. I'm going to come back here and get it next to the up front. Because this has to do with our reading today. You see, in our reading today, the last night that Jesus is with his disciples, it says that it was the day before the Passover, right? Well, this is Monday, Thursday in the Gospel of John. And Monday, Thursday in the Gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, it happens on the Passover. But in John, it's different. They're sitting down for a meal. Jesus gets up and he takes off his robe. He ties a towel around his waist. He fills a basin with water. And he goes to wash the disciples' feet. Now, what is wrong with this? Other than the fact that they wore sandals and they've been walking around in dirt all day and their feet are probably just stinky and nasty. Right? That's funny, people. You're supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> right? What's wrong with this? Well, what's wrong with this is this basin and tub was where it's supposed to be. If you owned a home and you didn't have slaves, you wouldn't wash the, the feet of your guests. You would give them, if you were a good host, you would have a basin and a towel and water at your door for them to wash their feet as they came into your house. If you had a slave, you might have your slave wash the feet of the people who are visiting with you. So, no free person would wash the feet of another person unless it's an act of sheer devotion and sheer love. And Jesus takes off his robe, ties a towel around his waist, and then goes to his disciples and washes their feet with what he is wearing. With what he is wearing. And Jesus knows these 12 guys. He knows the people in the room, right? He knows... The mass that they have put on in front of him. Because there's another mass that I didn't tell you about that they talked about last week. Right? The mass that we wear ourselves. The mass that others put on us. The mass that I put on someone else. And the mass that we put on before God. Because there's a special mass that you wear before coming to see God. But God sees through every last one of these masks. He knows what's happening in your heart and in your life. And you can't hide anything from him. And Jesus sat down at the feet of his disciples and, and washed each one of their feet. Peter, James, John, Levi. Is this a quiz I'm going to fail? Right? Judas is scary. The one who betrays him. Wearing his mask. Jesus washes his feet. You see, Jesus knows what's happening. In each and every one of our lives. And there's nothing that we can hide from him. And he wants us to take our masks and throw them away. He wants us. To not put on a false face for anybody around us. He wants us not to accept what other people try to make us to be. He wants us to be who he created us to be. And he loves us that way regardless of what he knows we're going to do. He loves us regardless of what he knows we have done. He loves us regardless of what it is in our lives that we're going through. And when we think that he's not going through it with us, he is. Jesus is always with us. And he wants us to take off our masks. And he gets to Peter and he said, and Peter says to him, Lord, what are you doing? Are you going to wash my feet? And, and Jesus says, you don't understand yet, Peter, but you will at one point. And Peter says, what does Peter say? What does Peter say? <clears throat> you will never wash my feet. Right? What's the one thing you don't say to God? Never. 
God has a very big sense of humor. And when you say never, he just kind of laughs at you. Right? The best line from any movie, a little tangent here, the best line from any movie is uh, My Sister's Keeper. If you haven't seen My Sister's Keeper, you need to go rent it and watch it. I don't know if it's on Netflix or Amazon or anything, but My Sister's Keeper. Very first scene on the screen is, want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Right? Peter says to Jesus, you will never wash my feet. And why did Peter say that? Because Peter's hung up on what society says needs to happen. Peter's hung up on this is the way that it's always happened. This is the way we've always done this, Jesus. We can't do it any other way. I'm the student, you're the teacher. I'm the learner, you're the master. It's not about, about anything else. It's about us keeping society in the right place and doing things in the right order. And Jesus says to Peter, your order doesn't matter anymore. It's all about what I'm teaching you. It's all about what I'm doing here. Don't get hung up on that's the way we've always done it. Don't get hung up on that's how it's always been done. Don't get hung up on that's what society tells us we have to do or that's what this group tells us we have to do. I'm here to teach you a new way. So Jesus takes the water washes his feet. And when Peter figures out that it's not about what he has known before, but it's about something completely new, what does he do? Not just my feet, but my hands and my head, Lord, give it to me all. Cover me with it. Let me dive in with you. You see, when we understand what Jesus is doing, that's, what we'll, that's how we'll answer. My hands and my head too, Lord, please. Just know that Jesus loves you. Exactly as you are, right here, right now. He doesn't want you to put on an act for him or for anyone.